Hello, everybody, and welcome to the second episode of the Lunar Outpost video series starring Dr. Forrest Mayan, MIT, Destiny Space Systems, and now Lunar Outpost. Welcome, Forrest. Hey, um, I'm happy to be here again. <laughs> awesome. So this is part two of a five-part video series um, with Forrest, where we're going to be talking about MOXIE, which is on board the Perseverance rover. Uh, Forrest just joined Lunar Outpost, but has, working, has been working on MOXIE uh, for some time now, and will continue to do so as a member of our team. Today, we're going to pick up where we left off last week, discussing MOXIE. Um, so, Forrest, why don't you begin by telling us about the origins of the project, who is involved, as well as some of the motivations behind a demonstration like MOXIE. Sure. So, MOXIE, just to recap for people just coming in on this episode, uh, stands for the Mars Oxygen In-Situ Resource Utilization Experiment. And it is on Mars right now. It is a device in the belly of the Perseverance rover. And the purpose of it is to produce oxygen on Mars. And I think we've kind of covered it, but why we would want to make oxygen on Mars? Well, there's really two reasons. The first one is that oxygen uh, is used as an oxidizer for propellant. And one of the propellants, such as methane, um, you know, needs a majority of the weight of your propellant of, uh, is actually the oxidizer. So 78% of the weight of a, uh, methane oxygen rocket, um, is going to be just the oxygen. And by making that on the surface of Mars, uh, you can basically fill up your oxygen tanks for all of your return rockets, uh, without having to bring it there. And that saves a lot and a lot of money. So that's that's basically you know why we're doing it. Of course, you can also breathe uh, the oxygen as well, but really it's to make that propellant, make up to 25 to 30, maybe even 35 tons of it, depending on the size of the rocket you want to send home. And that'll save, you know, who knows, maybe two to $3 billion uh, from not having to send quite as many uh, SLS or Falcon Heavies or whatever sort of rocket is going to bring the infrastructure to Mars. Excellent. Yeah. So, you know, I would imagine that this wasn't our first stab at this. So were there any projects that came before that you would consider, uh, you know, a predecessor to this project um, and serve as, as uh, you know, a history of this kind of demonstration? Yeah. Yeah, totally. So I would say like the, the earliest, um, you know, thought that this this would even be possible probably was inspired um, from the Viking landers that verified that that Mars has a CO2 atmosphere. And once we understood that there was CO2 in the atmosphere, about, you know, 96%, sometimes 97%, depending on the time of year, um, people started thinking, hey, we could probably use this carbon dioxide uh, to produce oxygen. And there was an early, early paper written the very next year, in 1978, um, by Ash and Dowler that basically proposed the pre-deployment of an ISRU system to Mars to produce uh, oxygen um, using a Sabatier and water uh, electrolysis system. So it would um, take the carbon dioxide and hydrogen to produce methane and water, and then it would electrolyze the water component of it to produce uh, more hydrogen and oxygen. So these two chemical systems would um, be a system that would be used to basically develop your, um, your oxygen, as well as um, use a resource that you would bring from Earth, which is hydrogen, to, as a feedstock for the Sabatier process. And over the years, people looked at a bunch of different ways that you could use this oxygen, um, not only Sabatier, uh, but in 1989, uh, there was a paper that kind of proposed using a um, solid oxide electrolysis system, a solid oxide electrolysis, relatively new technology. It's a solid oxide fuel cell running in reverse. Um, this system, and that was uh, oh, 32 years ago, that would use the same technology that, that Moxie's using to produce oxygen directly from the air uh, without requiring a feedstock of hydrogen to be sent to Mars. So those are some of the earliest um, 
you know, concepts that that kind of came about. And then since then, it, you know, ISRU uh, for that to create propellant and specifically oxygen, but sometimes, um, you know, methane as well for that return trip has been part of, you know, almost every NASA study um, that was looking at a way to sustainably uh, take a trip and return from the red planet. Excellent. Yeah, I think that's great context. It's clear that, you know, there's been a lot of motivation to do this, and it speaks to the significance of the project that's currently going on um, to the scientific community, but also to humanity as a whole. Uh, so with that context in mind, um, do you want to dive deeper into the operations that MOXIE will actually be conducting on the Martian surface, surface over the next couple weeks? Sure. Yeah. So MOXIE has a lot of things that we need to learn um, about. And one, the first one that everyone, you know, thinks of is, can we do it, right? Can we send this system to Mars and can we produce oxygen? And that in itself is going to be a huge feat because, you know, solid oxide electrolysis is a relatively uh, new technology. And there's a lot of technical challenges, uh, even with scaling and using it on Earth. And so those had to be overcome, and then they had to be overcome again to actually, you know, demonstrate it on Mars. And, and to get something on Mars, you know, it's not just, you know, being on Mars that's the hard part, but getting there is actually pretty hard, too. So when sure. something's put in a rocket, you know, everything's shaking, right? So you have lots of vibration, you have radiation, you have thermal extremes, and the amount of technology development that goes into just Developing something that'll work once it gets on Mars is extraordinary. So step one is to demonstrate that it works. And then once it works, we're going to be doing all sorts of tests to see how it operates at different seasons. So one goal is to test it in every time of the Martian year. And that's important because the atmospheric density of Mars changes drastically based on the season. The other thing we want to test is we want to test it in all times of day and night. Uh, so at night, the air is much denser because it's colder and it's easier to operate at nighttime because you have a lot more feed gas. Um, and so we want to test it at night as well. We even might want to test it, you know, during a dust devil to kind of test out our filter that is designed to get the, ox the, the dust out of the in inlet uh, carbon dioxide. So there's a whole bunch of different operational tests that we want to do, as well as optimizing some of the, you know, electronic control parts that um, will become a lot clearer when we do our deep dive on MOXIE uh, the next episode. Uh, so you mentioned uh, that there's a ton of technical technological development that goes into just getting MOXIE safely to the Martian surface to perform this analysis. Uh, would you mind elaborating on what your role was in coming up with those testing plans and ensuring that MOXIE gets there safely and works once it does? Yeah. So uh, one of my roles as a grad student was I, I was really involved in all sorts of areas of the project from early trades um, on the conceptual design, because when MOXIE was awarded, it looks a lot different than it does now. Um, and so we traded uh, different devices to control the pressure. Uh, we also looked at different ways to actually capture the oxygen. So we looked at some ways to, um, I mean, capture the CO2 to freeze the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. And we also evaluated just using a, a scroll compressor to compress the oxygen. So early on, it was really looking at the system and finding the, the most reliable way to operate MOXIE within the rover. And there are some differences between how you would operate something that's within the power constraints of the rover, because we live as a friendly neighbor to all these scientific instruments. Um, and so we have to make sure we play nice so we have you know, we have a budget for how much power we can use. Uh, we have different times that we can operate and stuff. So there's some types of technologies that may be great for a deployed system that's stationary, but maybe isn't the most efficient way for something that's in the rover. So early on it was architectural traits. Later on, I got involved in the development of the uh, cells themselves. So these are the, the SOXI cells that actually produce the oxygen. And one of the things that, that I investigated as part of my PhD work was um, 
how to safely operate those. Uh, and I'm not going to try to go too detail here because it is a very uh, detailed stuff that will go into the science episode on the science of Moxie. Um, but basically, you know, you you drive a voltage across these cells that strips the oxygen off the carbon dioxide. If you run the voltage, you know, too high, um, you could strip off too much oxygen and produce carbon, which would destroy your device. And if you operate things too hot, um, it could cause other problems, too cold. So the cell itself is actually really hot. And so there's, there's all of these knobs that you have to balance. And so I investigated how far you can turn each of those knobs before destroying it. And then I also created models of Moxie, which we now use to uh, run all of our tests in software before we upload it to the rover to make sure that it's uh, a safe run. So that was uh, kind of, you know, my contribution from architecture to uh, testing the limits of the cells to modeling the cells. Understood. Yeah, you mentioned testing. So it sounds like there's several different parts uh, to MOXIE. Uh, do you maybe want to touch on each one of those individually uh, at a high level just to give people an idea of, of the different parts of the system that are involved? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, personally, I focused on the high-level system, and the SOXI cells itself and controlling it. But there's a lot of other components to MOXIE, and it in itself is a bunch of mini experiments. So the first part of MOXIE, and you, can, my, you imagine, I think you've seen some of the pictures um, mm -hmm. on Mars where it's really dusty, and we've actually seen dust devils and stuff like that. So there's wind, there's dust. So the very first thing that we need to do is filter out all that dust. And so... Um, John McLean, he's now a postdoc working on MOXIE, he did a lot of work uh, understanding dust and the filters um, to clean the, the air that comes into MOXIE. So step one, we have to clean the air. And there's a lot of technology to be developed for that for longer systems. Step two, of course, why is the air going through the filter in the first place? You have some sort of acquisition system. MOXIE uses a compressor called a scroll compressor. And these are often used in refrigeration systems. They're, um, they're, they're really cool. I'll put up a picture of them, but they have these rotating, uh, they call them involutes, that basically volumetrically compress the air. And it spins really quick, uh, thousands of RPM. And then once we do that, the air is um, basically goes through a tube and is slowly heated. It goes into this insulated uh, like oven part of MOXIE. And inside this, this oven portion of MOXIE, there's a heater and the air tubes and then the cells themselves. And so the, the air increases in temperature before running through the cell and performing the electrolysis process. And then of course you have the cells that extract the oxygen from the carbon dioxide. And then there's a pipe on either side. So there's one that comes off from the carbon dioxide side, which ends up with a mixture of unused carbon dioxide and uh, carbon monoxide. And then there's another pipe that has oxygen. And then those run through another set of sensors that evaluates the purity of it. So there's a whole sensing system in MOXIE. So this is another component called the sensors that evaluates the temperatures, the pressures, uh, the flow, and then also the, um, the composition of the gas coming off of MOXIE. So we got carbon dioxide acquisition, electrolysis, and sensors. And those are the main uh, areas of MOXIE. Thank you, Forrest. Uh, I think that's a good stopping point for today. Um, next time on episode three, Forrest and I will be diving deep into MOXIE and the more technical aspects of it. Um, so all of the all of the science behind it um, that you could want to know, we'll be getting into. So um, please, uh, you know, follow us on all socials, the Lunar Outpost, um, and stay tuned for the next episode.